governor's office is concerned that we not have everybody march up to his office and mass. The governor's office was inside the building just down the hall. After the photo, we headed into the governor's office to personally hand over the petitions to the governor's chief deputy as scheduled. Well, a nice political fairy tale. My camera and I were the first to be turned away. The petitions ended up next to a trash can in the governor's reception area. This is perfect. It's perfect. It's exactly the way that we've been treated for 20 years. So those things may be thrown away, but if they're thrown away, what they can't throw away is what we actually did to get those things thrown away. And that's what still remains. I'm mad as hell. I'm angry. Not long after the petition fiasco, Linda Cushing walked down another hallway. She quit teaching and began working as a full-time union activist for the American Federation of Teachers. A decided turnaround since she had been anti-union before she started teaching. Instructors got their big break in 2001 when a state report by the California Post-Secondary Education Commission officially confirmed that adjunct faculty earned significantly less than full-timers for doing the same classroom work. Soon after the study went public, Governor Gray Davis, against strong opposition from Republicans, gave in and allocated $57 million toward getting part-timers fully paid. It's not a major victory, it is a significant victory. It's the biggest victory that we've ever gotten. And, uh, so we look forward to building on that in the future. So as far as CPFA and uh, I am concerned, that's sort of a down payment. In other words, we had no reason to stop singing our theme song. Nor did Green Party gubernatorial candidate Peter Camejo think the problem was solved. All we have to do is say, yes, you can hire people part-time, but you have to give them the same benefits and the same pay schedule that you give people on full-time. They're doing the same work. But Camejo isn't the only politician supporting part-time college teachers. Past LA Assemblyman Scott Wildman also called for equal pay for equal work. So has State Senator Dee Dee Elpert, as well as State Senator John Vasconcelos, and Assemblywoman Jackie Goldberg. It is not entrepreneurial genius to save money by cutting wages and benefits. This is not entrepreneurial genius. This is just greed in the private sector and stupidity in the public sector. How do you have happy, I mean, if, if nothing else, like happy, productive employees who end up producing the product that you want to have produced to the students? How can this not lop over, even among the most optimistic of us, into the classroom in some way? With so little progress made, the state chancellor himself eventually came to believe unified action may be necessary. You could be right. I'm kind of going back and putting myself in your head. At some point in time, we may need to have some sort of demonstration. But I don't want to demonstrate just because of the part-time inequities. I want to demonstrate across the board that our funding needs aren't being dealt with. Critical among them are the part-time issues. But state, if you don't deal with this, there will be consequences. As we were completing this documentary, it looked like the state chancellor might grab that picket sign. Shortly after the governor's 2002 re-election, the $57 million down payment was on the chopping block as the governor began slashing overall funding to community colleges during a state budget crisis. In March of 2003, students led the protest against those overall budget cuts.
Perhaps the worst consequence for students who rely on community colleges may be that so many teachers are calling it quits. I know a number of people that start out in community college teaching and they're gone within two years of their own volition because they see, they see the pay system, they see the lack of respect, um, they have better options. Turnover among part-time faculty may be as high as 35 percent. Where do they go? Private industry is luring away many college teachers. Scott Douglas found his better option at Packet Video which offered him the stable income he needed to support his family. He now earns as much as he would have made had he been fully compensated as a part-time teacher. Uh, certainly I, I miss some of the kinds of rewards that went with teaching. You know, the, the, the excitement that one feels when you know that you've had a, a hand in, in, in impart, imparting to someone a knowledge that means something to you. And that's, that's the way I, I felt about teaching. So what you're going to have is we're going to have a brain bank drain out of academia for anybody who has any guts, mm -hmm. and we're going to go into computers, or they're going to start their own businesses. And in talking to my part-time colleagues, they say, look, I'm getting out of teaching. No, I wouldn't change my profession. I plan to do this until I die. In fact, because of my poor retirement system, I plan to die in the classroom. I plan to work until I'm very old and uh, I expect to be hauled out on a gurney. <laughs> I do.